Hey guys, how's it going? Well, for me, or more for my car, it's that time of year again for the emission sticker. Um, and having the supercharger has always been a little challenging. Um, all my monitors I get ready except for my catalyst monitor, uh, which I used to in the past, and I don't know why now it won't, and my EVAP system. So my EVAP, I could ready sometimes long enough to get my sticker and then shortly after throw the check engine light and that was for um, low purge valve like vacuum that type of thing and there it is got my sticker so yeah and I just kind of want to walk through um, actually instead of just trying to turn on the evap system with Honda and then um, waiting for it to ready there'd be pending codes um, I could show you, I'll flash that screen up. So I, it ends up being a pending code. The monitor would ready, and then I would have like 20 miles before it would actually throw a check engine, become an active, which makes the check engine come on. Um, but now this year, I it's not happening. So instead of me trying to play this game with Honda at a ready and stuff, roll the dice, will it ready? I wanted to solve the problem. So. There was a, uh, a local shop that actually diagnosed my EVAP system. I thought there was something wrong with it. And they're like, no, it's actually um, right here. So, for anyone with the Kraftwerk supercharger kit, your EVAP system gets plugged in here. Here's your e EVAP line. And, yeah, it gets plugged in right there. And what the problem is that they found, this is... Um, foreign auto repair in uh, Oxford Mass uh, there's not enough when they plugged it left it plugged in the evap it would fail there's not enough vacuum to make it go um, work properly they pulled off the brake booster and plugged the evap straight in as a test and it passed so this is what they suggest me suggested me to do is T into the brake booster line then off the T all right it's a 3 8 T okay and here's your evap line and then you're gonna want to put a one-way check valve so you don't want to like send boost through they said through here and then you're you know like I'm putting 14 pounds of boost going back to the evap system Here's the check valve. Now the check valve has to be big enough for that line. That was kind of hard to find. Um, so this is from CarQuest. And there's the part number for it. Okay. And that's the guy right there. Now one more thing that's very important is there is a an arrow on it for direction and you want it going towards the manifold. Uh, if you have it going back the other way, I guess you can break them or it's just not going to work the way you want it. It's going to block the vac vacuum the wrong way. Um, so again, you look for the little arrow and you have the arrow going towards the manifold. So your vacuum flow from the purge valve goes back in the manifold. Alright, so I have Honda hooked up to my car. Yeah, it's dirty. My son got me new mats. These things don't last <laughs> very long. Um, okay, so let me uh, turn on power. Okay, so this is what I have going on right now. Like I said, you know, after getting my sticker, I'd have all sorts of check engines if I didn't disable the... Um, um, the EVAP system. Alright, so go online, diagnostics, and you can see that right here, EVAP monitoring system, yes, yes. Catalyst monitor is on, but no, and that's fine for uh, my year of car, 2014. I'm allowed one not ready. And I'm not sure why that is. I do have a catted downpipe. 
So I'd like to point out also that, you know, there's some people wondering, like, how I'm getting my sticker. It's with your tune, I think. You know, some tuners shut, like, the, the Catalyst monitor, the EVAP, they sh maybe the Misfire monitor, they'll shut off. And then you go get your sticker, and you don't have enough monitors ready, and you're not going to get your sticker. Um, I turn everything on. Everything that's supported, I make sure Honda, it, it, it says yes. And um, they, if those aren't all on yes, you know, some guys are getting flagged from the MAC or MAC station, uh, the Massachusetts State Inspection, which is a bigger deal. Uh, I'm going to the calibrations here for a second. Actually, I got to download the map. Okay. So I'm going to go back to calibration. This would be easier if I had a screen recorder. I do, but it doesn't work with Windows 10 anymore. Okay, so you go under, um, I'm going to go under miscellaneous. Okay. And. You gotta make sure, like you know, you enable your EVAP, all the stuff I've checked on. So my normal tune shuts, like the intake air leak, cold start idle. You know that's checked off. The EVAP is checked off, and when you shut the EVAP off, it it, it disables these codes anyways automatically. Um, but you gotta make sure all these are checked on. Um, otherwise, the EVAP's not gonna work. It won't ready. I think what I really like about this setup now is it's pretty much like a hundred percent street legal car, um, emission standpoint. Anyone can bring this car anywhere to a dealership or your local uh, garage and get a sticker, no problem. Um, I still have my stock exhaust, so it's not too loud. Um, do have the full race three inch downpipe with the catalytic converter, so um, I got my flow, but it's not, you know, it's not too loud. Uh, let's see what else. I'm still on Eibach. The Pro Kit lowering springs drops me an inch and a half. In Massachusetts, you're allowed two inch drop, so I'm still within uh, um, within uh, their specs, and I'm, which you know it's low, but it just covers the the wheel gap. Yeah, and I like that. All right, I also like to point out by doing this with the EVAP system. Now it's it's on all the time. It's working. It's functioning properly. Um, I've picked up five miles a gallon. I was getting like 27 on average. Now I'm at 32. So that's another plus of getting that. So so again, I'll recap real quick. This video was more for anyone that has a Craftworks, I'm pretty sure it'll work for the HN guys too, um, if you're having problems with the EVAP system. But again, this is 2014 Civic SI, any of the 9th gens. I know a lot of guys now are um, getting the Craftworks kits. So, just to show you, just take your br brake booster line into the uh, your Craftworks manifold that they give you. Okay, tee it off. All right, with a three eighths of an inch T, okay. Um, and then what I ended up doing is getting another. I didn't cut the original three, um, the three eighths tube going to the brake booster. I added just a little piece, and then take your evap line, take it off where it's, it's supposed to go here, and plug it in on the other end of the T. And then put your check valve in between that. I end up cutting that line and make sure your arrow is going towards the manifold okay and again that part number there's the part number it's uh, yeah it's a from car quest I got it from advanced auto and then don't forget to plug this after because I'm sure that'll play uh, that's after the map sensor so I'm sure that would throw off something when your car's gonna run and that's it you know enable your uh, evap system wait for it to ready and 
should be good to go. So, uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to message me, and I hope this helps a lot of guys out. Again, I've had this kit now for over three years. Um, it's been a struggle trying to figure out why it's doing what it's doing with the EVAP system. Again, not enough vacuum to pull to. Um, so I guess when the purge valve opens, there's no vacuum to, to pull the fumes out. So it throws a code for, uh, it's almost like the, it's for like uh, the leaky uh, system or a slow purge valve code. I forgot the name of it, but um, yeah, again, I hope this helps and thanks guys for watching.